when we have a needle motor slash positioning problem, we would be touching the needle up key, and by pressing the needle up key, our needle up position does not happen. The back side of the machine, we've already removed the belt guard to show the top shaft and the hand wheel attached to the shaft. What we're checking is to see if the end of the hand wheel is in relation to the shaft here. It has been pushed in and it is not in the proper location. So what we're identifying is what is the proper location. What we want to do is check the hand wheel to the sensor lights that are on the bottom of the power supply. To do that, we're going to turn the hand wheel counterclockwise to bring the tip of the arrow at the 12 o'clock position. We will then turn the sewing machine on its side to where it's laying on the motor so that we can actually see the bottom of the power supply and it has seven holes on the bottom and we are checking the first hole from the back and the third hole from the back and these lights will help us identify what problems we're having with our needle or motor sensor. Indicator light number one is our motor sensor. We will check this in one full rotation first to make sure that it blinks on and off in a full rotation. So I'm turning the hand wheel now in counterclockwise rotation and as I turn we can see it's not blinking now and that is not good. That's telling us that we have either a bad motor sensor, now you can see it's blinking again, or the hand wheel is not in a proper position. So here we can see that we're having a motor sensor problem. Now we're going to identify hole number three, which is our needle position. We're going to do the same application, but this time, instead of the light blinking, it will stay on for a long period of time and then it should turn off. We see it turns off now, it will stay off until we continue to turn and then it will turn back on and we continue to turn to where the arrow comes back up to the 12 o'clock position and we can see that the needle position light or sensor is working properly. It goes on for a long extended time and it goes off for extended time. So by testing the motor sensor and the needle sensor, we've identified that the motor sensor is the bad part or that the hand wheel is not in the proper position and this is why it wasn't flashing. So let's see what we have to do to test that. We have two set screws on the hand wheel that it mounts it to the shaft. As we turn the hand wheel in counterclockwise rotation, we find the first screw and we continue a little bit further and we will see the second screw. Our first screw in rotation is sit on a flat on the shaft. We will come in and loosen this screw just ever so slightly, turn the hand wheel, loosen the second set screw, and now we'll be able to move the hand wheel in and out. You can see how we do that. So we're just going to move the hand wheel out to where the end of the hand wheel is at the end of the shaft in this location here. Once we have that lined up, we'll come back and tighten the set screw just finger tight. We will back it up and tighten the other screw on the shaft and this was the first one in rotation. That one again will be on the flat of the shaft and now we will come back and we will double check the light to see if this is working. We just moved the hand wheel out. Now we're going to go back and test our motor sensor and we're looking at light number one and, we're, and we've set our hand wheel in position. We will now turn the hand wheel counterclockwise 360 degrees and we're going to continue to check to see if the light flashes all the way around.
And we have now completed one full revolution, and we can see now that it flickered all the way around. So what the problem was on this particular machine was the hand wheel had got pushed in to the casting and it wasn't set properly. If we had taken and moved the hand wheel out and we had put it at the proper setting and we found that the light was still not flashing properly, what we'd want to do is check the sensor and the disc. The way we do that is we're going to use a four millimeter Allen wrench and we're going to loosen the motor bracket screws We will lift the motor up so that we can get the belt off of the motor pulley, take the belt off of the hand wheel, and we will just lower the motor down so that it's setting. With the belt removed inside where the belt was at, we have two set screws. As we're turning the hand wheel counterclockwise, we have our first screw and it is set on a spot on the shaft and the second screw is not. We will loosen that screw first. We will turn the hand wheel, come into this one, and loosen it several turns, and the whole hand wheel will slide off, and there we can see the spot that's on the shaft, and that is only on one part of the shaft, and again, that will be the first screw in rotation is where that sp uh, screw will go on the shaft. And what we see inside the hand wheel is our sensor disc and the actual sensor itself. On the inside of the hand wheel we have the glued disc. On the inside part we can see the reflective tape one third of the way around. The light will be off during this time. We can see it's not for two thirds of the way and that's where it will be on. This is for our needle up and down position. On the outside of the disc, we can see it reflective, then not, reflective, then not, and it goes all the way around to where it's like a, a dash and a slot, a dash and a slot, and this is for our motor sensor, and that's why it's supposed to flash on and off more quickly. On the actual sensor itself that's attached to the back side of the sewing machine, we can see our photo sensor on the outside that lines up with the dash. Again, this is the motor. And on the inside, this is for the needle sensor. That would be for the inside piece here. We can see that we have no scratches. We have nothing on this part scratches. And as we look closely, we can see that the eyes look like they are still in good shape. But if we are testing this, and we move our hand wheel in and out like we just did and we find that there's still a problem, we will either have to replace the disc or we'll have to replace this. And now we'll go ahead and show how we put it back on to make sure it's working correctly. Now replacing the hand wheel back onto the main shaft. Remembering that we have the flat side of the shaft, we have our two screws that are on the hand wheel. The hand wheel turns in counterclockwise rotation so we find our first screw and we line it up to the set screw and slide it in making sure that the back of the hand wheel is in line with the shaft. That's our starter point to be able to make sure that everything is set. So then we would go ahead and tighten our first screw that's on the flat. Not very tight, just finger tight. Turn the hand wheel and take the second screw and do the same thing, finger tight. Now we have that ready to go. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to, before we put the belt and the belt guard back on, we're going to just make sure that we check our lights to make sure that they are working. Now that we have the hand wheel back onto the main shaft, we're going to double check to make sure that we have our light working and our motor sensor is flashing. I've got the arrow at 12 o'clock 
and I'll start turning the hand wheel and what we're watching for as I continue to turn that it will blink in the 360 degree rotation. I will continue to turn until the arrow comes back to 12 o'clock and as we've watched that it's flashed all the way around. That's telling us that the motor sensor and the hand wheel are working together and now it is correct. We will also check the needle sensor. We will do the same rotation. We're now checking the needle sensor and as we're turning the hand wheel in rotation we'll see that the light stays on and now it's flickering. This light should not be flickering. This is showing us that either the needle sensor or the disc is bad or the hand wheel is either pushed too far in or too far out because it's not going completely off and completely on. This is showing diagnostically that something is incorrect. We now have the two set screws loosed on the hand wheel. We now can move the hand wheel in or we can now move the hand wheel out. And this is for minor adjustments to set the lights number one and number three. This is the fine adjustment. Once we have that set in the proper location and we still have a problem with the lights, then we know that it's either the disc or the sensor that may be bad. But this is the final adjustment. We can see that it's on and as we continue to turn in the 360 degree we see that it goes off. I'll continue to turn and before we come to the 12 o'clock position it will come back on and I stopped at the 12 o'clock position and it stays on. Now we know that both the motor sensor and the needle sensor are set correctly. We have just checked our positioning of the hand wheel with the lights for diagnostic and it all worked. So we are ready now to go ahead and put our belt back over the hand wheel over to the motor pulley. Now we're going to go ahead and lower the motor. Once the motor is lowered and the belt is in line with the pulley motor to the pulley hand wheel, we now can go ahead and tighten each screw and we now have our belt replaced back onto the machine. And now our belt is around our motor pulley and up around the hand wheel. The last thing that we would go ahead and do is we would replace the belt guard back over to the casting by putting our two screws on top and our third screw on the bottom and we have now replaced or checked our motor and needle sensor.